Rahim, in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. In year 680, 61 Hijri, on the day of Ashura, the 10th day of the month of Muharram in the Arabic or Muslim calendar. On that day of Ashura, Imam Hussein stood in the battleground of Karbala. He had 72 companions with him who had fought brave, but were all lain slain. There was only one remaining person with him of the men fighting on his side. That person was his brother and standard bearer, the flag bearer, Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. Imam Hussein had a special mission for al-Abbas in that last moment, a mission that no one else can accomplish but al-Abbas. The mission was to bring water from the Euphrates River to the thirsty children and women in the camp. The Umayyad army had blocked access to the water to keep them thirsty so that no soldier, none of those brave men, can go out fighting without with having drink any drop of water. The daughter of Imam Hussein, salam, Sukaina, had a special need for the water. She was very thirsty, but she didn't only want it for herself, but for her infant brother. He was crying of thirst. His mother's milk had dried out. And there was Al-Abbas, the only person to bring that water to them. This moment is lodged in the cultural memory of everybody loving Al-Abbas and Hussein and commemorating Ashura. The name Abbas evokes images of a powerful spirit and a tender heart. The powerful spirit was demonstrated all throughout Ashura and before. Al-Abbas represented to the full extent of human capacity the values of endurance, persistence, perseverance, defiance. On the day of Ashura, when the soldiers were going out, he would jump into the rescue when any of them was in trouble with the army, engaging in battle. On several days before Ashura, Al-Abbas was in fact on a mission water. He went out, led a small group, and went to the Euphrates River, battled the troops there, was able to get some water back to the camps. But it was only little water and it was not enough in that desert and the heat of Karbala. So yet again, at that moment, Imam Hussein asked Al-Abbas to go for a mission water. At the Euphrates, the Umayyad soldiers were 4,000 men strong. The Umayyad army in total was 30,000 men strong. Let's try to put these numbers into perspective. In Texas, the siege of the Alamo represented a turning point in its history. The troops that carried out the siege of the Alamo were 2,000 soldiers, just half the number of the troops blocking access to the water at the Euphrates River. 30,000 army. What does 30,000 mean? When the American Revolution started, and the siege of Boston, at 1775, the population of Boston was only about 15,000, just half the number of the Umayyad army. Let's move forward from 1775 to nowadays. What would 30,000 people in one place, in a town, an urban population, what would they represent? They'd be among the 50 most populous locations in Sweden, among the 40 most populous locations in Australia and among the 15 most populous locations in Austria. 
So 30,000 people gathered in one place is a lot of people. And there was one man, lone but brave, facing them all on a mission to get water to the thirsty children and women in the camp. So that tender heart could not bear listening to the cries of the children without water. And he could not bear seeing them scared and afraid of the opposing army. So at night, in the nights before Ashura, he would mount his horse and circle the camp, having his sword so high, so that the children and women can feel safe and go to sleep. This tender heart and powerful spirit were merged together in a life of service. And that is what really attracts us, the lovers of Hussein and Abbas, to him. He represents to us the ultimate knight, the man who was doing the best he can for the people that had an impact in generations and centuries to come, an impact on all Islam. That service ended on that day trying to bring water, water, thirst. Those are things we can relate to on every day. So what services could we take on in our day-to-day -day activities? What impact can we try to have in this world? What service can we provide to our fellow humans in our family, in the community, or around the globe? Let's take water itself as an example. Around the globe, there are 800 million people without access to clean drinking water. Here in our community, we have a lot of natural water springs, but all of them have been depleting over time. Can you do something about that? Can you do something about the 800 million without water, clean water? How about your family in the household? There's so much consumption of water in rates higher than other parts in the world, even though we are deprived of natural water resources. Could you do something about that? So whatever issue you choose to work on, whether it's on a global scale, on the community scale, or just your household, what cause would you want to take on? Here right now, we are commemorating Ashura. It's part of our culture and heritage. How about preserving culture and heritage? We hear that all the time. There are some researchers going through history and documents and writing research that, and unearthing things for us that we did not know about. That's great. They're publishing it in two of our uh, local publications, al Waha and uh, Sahel. But that's really for the elite. How about something that goes on to everybody? How about reading through those research papers, trying to write a tour and go on, be a tour guide, for people coming out from outside the community and for the children, the school students within the community and let them get to get to know about the city that dates more than 4,000 years ago. How about the books that we, we know that throughout our history as a city and Katif it has been thriving with culture, with poetry, with arts. How about looking at those old books, take out some poems in uh, events that we commemorate like this, send them out on WhatsApp groups, just put the name of the person, what time he lived through 200 years ago, 300 years ago, some information about him. That gets culture and heritage alive more than other things, more than keeping them in just the books. So there's so much we can do in the social innovation and service of people in whatever you decide to choose, a civic group, a social entrepreneurship, or any effort you do with your friends and colleagues. And in this, we are inspired by Al Abbas himself. He gave up all his life in the service of others. What can we give up in the service of others? Time, money, commitment. It'll take a lot of your time and effort. It'll weigh on your mind, but how much will you give? So Al Abbas had that mission on the day of Ashura, and he went to the Euphrates. He charged through the army and advanced to the river. He reached the Euphrates, reached out with his hand, and was going about to get some water and drink it. But he remembered Sukaina and her infant son and brother. 
he remembered Al Hussein. He threw the water out. He returned back with the skin water, filled with water, and advanced through the army once again. But they were determined not to get, let him go through with just water. In battle, he fought so hard, so brave, like his father Ali, but his right hand was, was severed. He took the sword with the left hand, he marched on, and the left hand was cut off. He took the sword with his mouth. He, he had the flag with him still. But then a flood of arrows was flying through and one of them struck his eye. And blood started streaming down. He stood confused. And another soldier came on with a metal rod and struck him on his head. Without hands, with an arrow in his eye, he fell down to the floor. And at that moment, he knew what would happen next. He knew that Imam al-Hussein would be the lone man in front of those 30,000 soldiers. He would know that all the bodies of these 72 brave men giving all their lives to Islam would be beheaded, would be stomped on with horses, the camps would be lit with fire, the ladies whipped, the children beaten, and still thirsty. One of the most tragic events in human history would unfold to the family of Prophet Muhammad just 50 years after his death. He passed away, and 50 years after that, the Umayyad army was so ruthless and able to do all this to the family of the household of Prophet Muhammad. But at that moment, when Al-Abbas fell down, he knew that that was coming later. But at that moment, Imam Hussein came in with a cry out of, now my back is broken. Like with all the other slain 72 companions, he wanted to pick him up and take him back next to the camp. But Al-Abbas, as he fell, saw that an arrow had struck the water and started spilling down on the sands of Karbala. And there was that promise of bringing the water to Sukaina. He charged on with a severed right hand, but he remembered Sukaina. His left hand was cut off, but he remembered Sukaina. His head was hit with a metal rod, but he charged on remembering Sukaina for the water. But now the water was spilled. He knew that he can't go even as a dead body and have Sukaina look at him without him bringing that water. And he was right because generations to come, centuries to pass, a millennium went on, and all the poems, all of us mourning Al Abbas, all of us commemorating with poignant feelings stirred by Karbala, we all remember and ask, Oh Abbas, where is the water, Abbas? Where is the water, Abbas? So let me ask you and everybody else listening to this and ourselves, well, where is the water? Where is that mission that is ours to give to this world? What service will we provide to our brothers and humanity? What impact will we have on our lives? What legacy will we leave as our lives go and we pass on to the day after? In all this, let us be guided by what Imam Hussein had prayed on the day of Arafah. O oh God, appoint for me sufficiency in my soul certainty in my heart, sincerity in my actions, light in my eyes, and insight in my religion. Let us be guided through with this prayer in all the actions we take day by day. May Allah help us represent Imam Hussein as he is. Hussein, the language of humanity. Assalamu ala al-Hussein, wa ala Ali ibn al-Hussein. وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين صلى الله على محمد وآل محمد